Honeybees are fascinating creatures for a number of reasons. Their incredible work ethic, the sugary sweet syrup they produce, and their intricate social structure. But another reason is that honeybees are, in fact, excellent mathematicians. Scientists claim that tiny insects can calculate angles and can even comprehend the roundness of the Earth. But there's particular mathematical bee genius behind the most important aspect of honeybee life, the hive. Just like humans, bees need food and shelter to stay alive. The hive is not only the bee's home, but doubles as a place to store their honey. Since it's so central to survival, honeybees have to perfect the hive's architectural design. If you examine any piece of honeycomb, you'll see that it's constructed from tightly packed hexagonal or six-sided cells. Of all the possible designs, why do honeybees choose this one? To understand, you need to think like a bee. Bees need a secure place for their entire colony to live. Similarly, there needs to be a place where their nectar can be stored and ripened suitably until it turns into honey. That means there's a need for some serious space efficiency. A good solution is to build little storage units or cells just big enough for a bee to fit into, which can also double as the containers in which nectar is stored, the bee's very own honey jars. The next thing is to decide what the little cells should be made out of. Bees don't have beaks or arms to pick up things, but they are capable of producing wax. The thing is, producing it is a lot of hard work. Bees have to consume eight ounces of honey to produce just one ounce of wax, so they don't want to waste it. So they need a design that allows them to store the largest possible amount of honey. Some two and a half centuries ago, a French astronomer, Miraldi, became fascinated with bees. One thing he noted about the double rank of cells in honeycomb is that their bottoms are not flat, but convex, formed of three rhombi. Obviously, the obtuse angles where bottom meets wall make it easier for the bees to construct the cells and to keep them clean. But Moraldi noted that there was a remarkable constancy to the angles of the rhombi. They measured about 70 degrees. He suggested that the bees had used this angle for the sake of simplicity. For if the acute angles of the rhombi are 70 degrees 32 minutes, the angles of the side trapezoids are identical. Rayamur, a noted French scientist, suspected that there was a further reason for the special shape. He wrote to a number of mathematicians asking what angle would give the most economical trihedral base on a hexagonal prism. Only one, Koenig, came up with an answer. To get his answer, he first proved that the volume of all hexagonal prisms with trihedral bases is the same, provided that the height h and the side A remain constant. This is easy to see. If a piece is cut off one place and put back on at another, the volume does not change. But as this distance changes, the shape of the prism and the area of its surface change. If this distance is called X, this is the formula for the surface area. It consists of the areas of the six rectangular sides, less the triangular pieces, plus the areas of the three rhombic ends, which can be calculated by means of the Pythagorean theorem. Substituting in this formula, calculating values for x equals zero, x equals one-tenth, and so on. Some 300 years ago, Newton invented the calculus. About 75 years later, when few men understood the method, Koenig manipulated the formula for the area according to the precise rules of the calculus. The cell then has the shape the bee uses with the angles of the rhombi that Moraldi gave. Someone may wonder whether this is so economical. Isn't it necessary to waste wax to build two pointed ends? Bees have the answer to this. They build the cells so that the bottoms are offset. Each cell fits into the pocket 
formed by three cells on the opposite side. Thank you.